January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, and the Hartford County Health Department can help women with and without insurance get the cervical cancer screening and follow-up testing they may need. If you or someone you know needs help getting screened for cervical cancer, call them at 410-612-1780. Again, that's 410-612-1780. All of us know someone that has cancer or has had cancer. Some of you listening may even have cancer. Well, we do know that preventing cancer is better than treating it. And there is a vaccine out there, believe it or not, that prevents certain types of cancer. My name is Rich Bennett, and on this episode of Harford County Living, I sit down with members of the Harford County Health Department to discuss this and more. the Harford County Living Podcast with Rich Bennett. Thank you for coming and please send any suggestions or comments to podcast at harfordcountyliving.com. The Harford County Living Podcast is produced for your enjoyment and show notes can be found at harfordcountyliving.com. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorites on our feed or iTunes. All links are in the show notes. Now let's join Rich Bennett and his special guest. We have Russ down there, right. Mallory, yeah. Rania, Teresa, yes, sir. Lillian, yes. Susan, and Mallory. I mean Molly. <laughs> <laughs> Molly. So you get a Mallory and a Molly is just too close. God. We're used to it. <laughs> Explain what is HPV. So HPV stands for the human papilloma virus. Papilloma. Yes. I did get it wrong. And a papilloma is the medical term for a wart-like bump. So it's a, the HPV virus is a large group of viruses that um, there's over a hundred different strains of that can lead to several different sorts of things such as common warts, genital warts, as well as precancerous lesions that can lead to cervical cancer, vaginal cancer, vulvar cancer, and penile cancer, anal cancer, mouth and throat, and genital warts in men and women. So HPV is a large group of viruses that can have either minor health effects when it's causing um, warts or serious health effects that can lead to cancer. I mean, it's, so it's different viruses, right? There are different strains or of different strains. this type of virus. Um, there's the low-risk ones and the high-risk ones, but there's several different ones of the virus, and it is a very common virus because it, it's... There's so much different types of the virus. How does it cause the cancer? Or does anybody even know? Um, well, do you know? Exactly? It causes your cells to start to grow abnormally, which is what cancer does. So right. it just, it'll just cause your, your cells to, to alter themselves. Right, so once they start, once you have this virus infected, once you have this virus inside of... Um, in the areas such as like your cervix, it can start to become, have the cells growing abnormally, and which will lead to cancer and can spread to other parts of the body as well. Now, what can people do to, I guess, is there any prevention or just, I mean, what, what do people need to do to, I guess, protect themselves from this? So, there is protection that you can, um, get from this virus, there is the HPV vaccine, which will prevent um, you from getting infected with the high risk strains of this virus. Okay. So there is the, um, the current uh, HPV virus that exists is the Gardasil 9, which protects against nine different strains of this virus. And these nine strains are the ones that are linked to the most um, high risk types of cancers. So the, um, vaccine is designed to protect protect against um, 90% of cervical cancers as well as 90% or 80 to 90% of these other cancers that can affect both men and women. All right, so the vaccine is not just for women. Men can get it as well. Right, so 
it is recommended for both men and women to get this vaccine. It's recommended for, um, or it's approved for 9 to 26 year olds to get this vaccine, but um, it's recommended most for 11 to 12 year olds to get um, it at that age. Wait, you said as early as 9? Yeah, so as early as 9 wow. you can get this vaccine. Um, it's recommended at such a young age because you want to get vaccinated against it before um, you ever come in contact with the virus. Right. And it is a virus that can be transmitted through sexual contact. So you want to get it at this young age before you ever come into contact with it. It can also be spread through skin-to-skin -skin contact. It's not exactly known 100% how it is spread, but it's mostly spread through... Skin-to-skin? Um, -skin? Meaning oh. holding hands or anything like that? or I mean... Um, I'm not exactly sure. They don't know exactly Still, that's how. That's just, just kind of scary. You're scared of skin. It's like, oh. Right, and that's with like the more common warts that you can okay. get. Uh, okay. That can be spread sort of like that. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. But the ones that affect the cervix and stuff like that are spread uh, through sexual contact. Right. Yeah. They, and you said up to the age of 26. It's approved um, under most insurances to get it um, up until the age of 26, but recently the FDA has approved for it to be um, given to 27 to 45 year olds, but it's not yet covered by most insurances, so that's something that isn't as common yet. Right. But uh, nine to 26 year olds are able to get this vaccine. So let's say they've already had sexual contact and then are active as they get older. Mm -hmm. Can they still get the vaccine or? They can still get the vaccine, whether they've come into contact with the HPV virus or not, it may or may not be effective, but some of the viruses, you don't, it doesn't show symptoms, so right. you don't really know, so it's better to protect yourself against getting it af even after you've had sexual intercourse for the first time. Um, you can still protect against the more higher risk strains of the, vac of the virus that can lead to cancer that you've like, likely not come into contact with. All right, so with this virus, let's say somebody doesn't get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. I mean, are there any symptoms that you could have, you know, one of these viruses? Are there some that you may never even know it could be in you? Well, that's both. So depending on which type of the virus, which strain of it you have, it can either show symptoms as in warts, as in your common wart or your genital wart. Um, but in these areas that you're, um, that can be affected by cancers developing from this virus, there are areas that you can't really detect. They're sort of internal, such as right. your cervix and within your throat and in um, penile cancer and anal cancer. There's not tests that can be done to detect whether there is these precancerous lesions growing, except for in the cervix, there is the cervical cancer screening test, and there's two types of tests that can be done to detect um, cervical cancer. Yeah, say yes. yeah. females, yeah, so when you go, when females uh, go to the OBGYN, they can right. get a pap smear, mm -hmm. and that kind of helps detect if there's any type of precancerous cells mm -hmm. in the cervix that are going to cause um, uh, cervical cancer down the line. Um, so it's for females we have that it's just harder for males There's no specific test that can be done to just determine if males have any type of um, virus in their body or if they have any type of um, wow. Issues such like that so for females we have the pap smear So nothing for guys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, and and during the pap smear they can also test for HPV virus they could test for specifically the high risk or um, uh, an overall number of the different viruses, uh, strains of the virus. Right. But and since there's mm -hmm. no test for guys, that's why it's so important for both men and women to get this vaccine to protect, to protect themselves from getting this infection that can lead to these serious types of cancers. And since these types of cancers aren't, don't have these tests to screen for right. them, they're typically found at later uh, times within those cancers where they're more serious and harder to um, treat. Mm -hmm. and so now with guys getting vaccines at the same age, 9 to 26? Mm-hmm. Okay. So for all ages, it's 
most recommended to get it at 11 to 12, which is when you're in sixth or seventh grade, with the other recommended um, vaccines that are required to go into seventh or seventh yes, grade. Yes, going into seventh grade. Right. Yeah, you have to take your kids to the doctors to get all these vaccines for school and everything because right. it's more or less mandatory. Is this one that's mandatory yet? No, this is not, not one of the mandatory ones. And that's yet, right? But it possibly could be? Hopefully, okay. yeah. I would like to see and that. And that's part of the reason why it, the rates of this vaccine is much lower than it should be because parents, it's not rec- required for their children to get it, so parents can choose to opt out. And a lot of the time, parents are either not fully educated about it or have misconceptions about this vaccine and just choose not to get it. Um, A lot of parents don't feel it's necessary to use vaccines and are just anti-vaccination in general right? and aren't comfortable with doing that. But the benefits of getting this vaccine far outweigh the possible minor side effects that can occur with any sort of vaccine which are like mild bruising and swelling at the injection site, um, nausea and fainting, stuff like that. So no major side effects. Right. So I mean, everything's going to have side effects. Right. There's no, no major, major side, side effects, effects to it. Um, they've okay. been thoroughly tested and researched. And um, for over 10 years since before they, it, was, it was developed, it's been tested. And um, there's nothing to say that this vaccine isn't safe and effective and long-lasting and there's no reason I believe that you shouldn't get this vaccine for your children. Well they started this vaccine what back early 2000s was it? It was 2006 for females and then 2009 is when it was approved for males to get the vaccine. So it's been out there for over 10 years. Right Mm -hmm. and since then the rates of um the HIV infections and precancerous lesions in the cervix have significantly dropped since this vaccine has been introduced. Well, that's good. Right. For the HPV, right. Yeah. Right, so for the HIV vaccine. And with like any other vaccine, um, it is effective in lowering the, ri- the uh, rates of the diseases that it's trying to prevent. So it is effective and it is possibly saving people in the future from getting cervical cancer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You said mis- a lot of parents have misconceptions. Mm-hmm. What are some of these misconceptions that they have? So, since this is a um, infection that can be spread through sexual contact, they sort of it can be viewed as sort of a vaccine to prevent a sexually transmitted infection. Right. But the point of vaccinating against this virus is not to prevent getting just like an STD or something like that. It's to prevent cancer from developing from this um, infection. From, okay. I think the other misconception yeah. is that people <laughs> think their kids are going to die. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. It's, what? Ridiculous. No. it's like ridiculous. I think it's like all of like the hype of, you know, the fake news that's spread mm-hmm. throughout mm-hmm. all of, you know, social media and just people talking to other people. It's just that parents mm-hmm. are worried that they're something bad is going to, like, their kid's going to grow, like, a third leg or something, like, yeah. <laughs> crazy like that. So it's, it's, it's so basically well, the, the parents are ideas, I yeah. guess, with um, um, autism yeah. is a big one that you hear mm-hmm. over and over again. Yeah, so they, it's just, I think, people see and hear, you know, people are starting to make up stuff, so they're getting these misconceptions. They're not researching that. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you if you see the research, it's, no one's no one's dying. You know, yes. everyone's right. having the same effects as mm-hmm. if you were to the get any shot. I mean, lie. a mm-hmm. lot of people also don't do well with shots, so you're gonna have like a mm-hmm. heightened, you know, issue after you get an injection in your arm. So right, I've seen that there's been like over a hundred million of the doses of this vaccine administered, and wow, there's been I have seen there's been cases where people have died after getting this vaccine but it has not been due to the vaccine and parents um right have altered that and said that this vaccine killed my daughter and it spreads throughout the social media and people pick it up and think that they're gonna their children's gonna die if they get it or have seizures or uh, crazy things that aren't happening because of this vaccine it could be something else affecting the child, and it's not the vaccine that is causing these sort of things. 
And it wasn't dying immediately after. It was like months. Right, months <laughs> after. <laughs> they've so. already received like their third dose of the vaccine, and then something happens, and then... How many doses do they have to get? So it's two to three, depending on your okay. age. Um, it's changed over the years with the newer forms of the vaccine. Um, I think it's currently two doses when you're within a certain age range. 14, under 14. Under 14. Okay. And if they start over the age of 14, then it's three doses. Now, all right, let's say somebody got it when they were under 14, but they only got the one dose. Mm -hmm. And then as they get older, mm -hmm. they decide they want to get the vaccine. So did they have to... Can they just get the other dose, or do they have to basically start over again? No, you don't start over again. Okay. They can just continue um, mm -hmm. to get the other doses that are needed. Okay. Well, that that's good to know, then. I just want to say that this is also, like, the only vaccine that is going to protect against cancer. Right. And, like, that's something I think that needs to be, you know, put out there again. Because it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, one thing that's going to help you prevent against cancer. And this why is, not do it? Why not mm -hmm. do it? That, oh, yeah, I never even thought about that. Yeah, the Man, risk of one. potentially <laughs> developing cancer <laughs> is so much worse than actually than getting this vaccine, this minor side effects that can occur from it. Is there, do you see a problem where you have providers and doctors out there telling people that they should get this vaccine? Or is it a case where, you know, they don't, the doctors aren't going to recommend it unless they're asked about it. So, I'm not too sure exactly if all providers are recommending it. I want to say that they are, but it's not something I can really right. say whether or not they are. But I have seen a study um, that was done by Johns Hopkins um, asking or studying the data about why parents aren't choosing to vaccinate their children. And one of the reasons why was because their doctor never recommended it or talked to them about it. Hmm. So they just never thought it was necessary for their child to get the vaccine. So according to this study, there are doctors are out there that aren't recommending it to their patients. And hmm. so they never know um, because most people get their health information from their primary care doctor right. or their pediatrician. So if they're not doing the job of recommending it to their patients, then their parent, their patients aren't going to know about it or think it's necessary if their doctor doesn't tell them the importance of it. Uh, that's one thing I still don't understand. I never get why. I mean, I don't know. Maybe doctors are just have vaccines at the wazoo, mm -hmm. and it's hard to recommend every one. Right. Um, but still, I mean, this is your kids you're talking about. And, I, and, and, and like, like Ronnie says, the only one that is uh, um, protects against, protects against, against mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's whoever thought we would hear, you know, the day where, hey, we have something that prevents cancer or that will help prevent cancer. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's amazing that this exists. And yeah. I highly um, encourage everyone to get this vaccine. So, all right, now, the health department. Mm -hmm. What does the health department do for, you know, to help these, um, you know, I mean, I know everything else, you have screening and all that. Uh, what about for HPV? So, for HPV, we have many services that can... Um, well, for the immunizations, the well, HPV vaccine is offered here. Okay. Right. We have an immunization clinic every Tuesday, um, and then we um, also do clinics, or we'll go out into the schools for the sixth graders mm -hmm. and offer HPV vaccine along with the other required vaccines. So you go out to the schools? Um, uh, oh, okay. Sometimes, yes, right. in the spring before they go into seventh grade. Um, we do um, walk-in clinics at the beginning of each school year, Okay. and we offer... Um, and then, yeah, we offer the HPV vaccine to everybody as they, uh, and the age group as they come through the door. And pretty much every time, if they say, if they uh, decline it, if a parent declines it one visit, then the next visit that they come, you know, we will have educated them at that visit if they decline right. it. And we always give them 
um, educational materials, ask them to research it and to look into it and to think about it. And then the next time they come, we again offer it, and that continues all the way through. And you said for when there are the kids, you said between the ages of 11 and 14, right? Mm -hmm. um, 9 to 9 to. 26. Well, 9 to 26, but when it first came out, what was, I mean, it was what, 11 to 14? It was what? still 9. It was still it was 9. Still, I think it was when it first still came okay. out, it was just females, and then later they added the boys in a few okay. years later, yeah. I guess because the reason um, is that because you figure 10 years ago, these kids that, you know, young girls that were, what, 15, mm -hmm. so they may not have known about it, but now they're 25. Mm -hmm. So how are you getting, letting the ones that are older now know about it? Mm -hmm. Or do they know about? I mean, so college mm -hmm. age students are a great catch up age okay. to go back in and start the education because mm -hmm. usually they have the autonomy to go in and make their own decisions at that point or would be more interested in making that kind of call for themselves. Right. So it is a good age to go in and talk to mm -hmm. college kids about getting it. Are, they, are they though? That's what I'm saying. Are, are people going out there and talking to them? Or I've worked there? in areas where it's a huge push for okay, college. Good. Um, mm -hmm. For college age people, and I know that we've gone to Harvard Community mm -hmm. College and talked to students. Great. Just in general about about public health and right and health education. So I know that it's it's information that is available to people. Okay, Maybe good. not as much as it should be. I guess. Well, yeah, 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 but it, even still, you're going out there and telling them. Right. So that's more than what, let's say, some other people are right. saying. And the health <laughs> department does um, provide vaccines through adult. Um, we there is a new meningitis vaccine that is out now for meningitis B. It's a new type of meningitis, and that is Vexero. That is a college um, vaccine that we give then, and um, we always review the immunization record. So if somebody at that age group didn't have it yet, we would again recommend it at that time okay. and could provide it also. Um, we will see anybody with private insurance. Um, most private insurances are accepted. Um, the uninsured. Um, with adults, it's a little more difficult. If they don't have insurance, we have right. to probably get them insurance first and then be able to provide them with vaccine. Uh, we are part of the Vaccines for Children program here. Um, it is a, we, this, Vaccine is free through the state. There is a $23 administration fee. Okay. Um, so it only goes, though, from infants to um, the age, through the age of 18. So once they hit 19, they're no longer eligible for that program. So then they would have to have medical assistance or private insurance. There's a program cover. called Vaccines for Children? Vaccines for Children, yes. I never knew that. It's VFC. <laughs> is what you hear commonly. We have a lot of providers in the county. A lot okay. of the, the um, pediatricians um, are providers, although it's getting less and less and less as we go. Yeah, we have to do another podcast on that. <laughs> sure. Uh, I, sure. I never knew that because, I mean, think about it. How many you know families out there where mm -hmm. they can't afford health care for their kids? Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. you have to have the vaccines for school, at least for public school. Yes. And I'm sure private school, too. Yes. So that is awesome. Man, see, I learn something new every time I come here. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. And you do, too, sometimes. I know, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on top of the vaccination is also screenings. So we have a family planning um, program here. And during that program, they are um, our, all of our clients are screened um, per protocol um, for cervical, uh, cancer. cervical cancer and HPV. Mm -hmm. And then there's and, also... And you can also treat warts if they do yes, have the through the STD warts. program or through our family planning programs. Mm -hmm. We can okay. treat warts. We do... Uh, I still do a small group of colposcopy. But that's getting into a little bit more than what I think we want to do here. But it's it's if you have an abnormal pap smear, the next steps that you would follow. Okay. And we also have the breast and cervical cancer screening program that offers a pap test to look for the abnormal cervical changes. So that could be taken care of with other procedures to get rid of those abnormal cells mm -hmm. before they turn into cancer. So routine screens is important. The HBV tests are done or can be done along with the pap test as well. So and depending on 
what the findings are if there's abnormal cells or if there's HPV also that determines when the woman needs to go have their next series or how often they need to go back for their testing mm -hmm. um, and okay. this is all really screening for cervical cancer because we want to make sure that we are able to get in there and um, the doctors can do the testing the labs could do the testing and hopefully treat and remove the cells before they turn into cancer so with routine screening so even if a woman or a child has had HPV vaccine they still need to have their regular screenings. And how often should cancer. they be screened for, for the uh, cervical cancer? Cervical cancer, um, well our program starts at age 40 but it's recommended um, age 21 yes. to start. Under 21 is not recommended to be tested okay. um, because the I guess the mindset is at that age their immune systems are very good and usually they will clear it on their mm -hmm. own. Um, from the age of 21 it should be every three years. Mm -hmm. Every three years. Okay. Every three years. It's a very very slow moving cancer so that's the one good thing with it many times as they were saying there's a lot of levels so you can catch it right. and and get rid of those abnormal cells long before it becomes cancer and so um, every three years as long as you have a negative mm -hmm. pap and HPV um, or a negative pap and then once they hit 30 30 mm -hmm. 20 yeah so that's through 29 mm -hmm. it's okay. every three years 21 to 29 and then age 30 and above it's every five years but you do the pap and the HPV test mm -hmm. together now are we it's, seeing the rates of cervical cancer dropping from this vaccine yes um so I'm sorry yes <laughs> it hasn't been a, around long enough to to say whether or not it's having an effect on cervical cancer rates because okay. it is a cancer that develops so slowly. But the rates of precancerous lesions, which can develop into cervical mm -hmm. cancer, has dropped since the HPV vaccine has been um, introduced. So the next time when we do this, we can act, <laughs> In a few actually years, say yeah, yes, sure. it has <laughs> dropped right. because of the vaccine. That's the hopefully the result of it which is leading to see. It's very towards. exciting to see. Well I mean it's exciting to see well number one that they that there is something out there that can prevent mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. types of cancer. Maybe one day there will be something that can actually prevent all cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Um, how do they contact the health department? Because I'm sure that screening has to be scheduled, right? Right. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So they can call the <laughs> The main number for the clinical services is in the Woodbridge location in Edgewood. The number is 410-612-1779. And for those of you that don't know, that's on 40 right behind APG Federal mm -hmm. Credit Union. Mm -hmm. And what's the website? Mm -hmm. I mean, can they schedule on a website or? You can't schedule on a website. But they can get more information. More information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. HarfordCountyHealth.com. Mm -hmm. And that has all the phone numbers, addresses, services, any information you would want to know okay. about. You guys got anything else to add? Well, I, I guess an important um, takeaway message is that almost all cervical cancers are caused by HPV. So this is, like Ronya said, one thing that people can do to try to help prevent cancer. Um, and this is the only vaccine that can do that. So um, if they want to look up more information, there's wonderful information online. CDC is um, great resource a great for resource. Information. Mm -hmm. information. So, so if they want to keep doing further research, please do. And, and you really. said with the HPV, it's not just cervical cancer. Right. right. I mean, there are other types. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it just makes sense to yes. to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly associated with cervical cancer because there's more strains of the virus that can mm -hmm. affect the cervix rather than these other um, parts of the body that mm -hmm. can be affected. But these other parts can also be affected right. as well, and it's also something to that you want to protect yourself against. So. All right, let me ask you this. I might be putting you on the spot a little bit here. What would you say to somebody who has a young son or daughter, mm -hmm. and you recommend them 
getting this vaccine, they just look at dead square in the eye and say, you got to be crazy. Why should I do this? So just saying that this is a vaccine that has been um, researched and studied and it is effective, safe, and it prevents against cancer from developing. So I don't know why you wouldn't want to be Because of the major side effects. I don't like there the There are no side major side effects, and all the... Everyone saying that there are serious side effects don't... I mean, there's not... But isn't this going to make my kid more sexually right? active? No, it's not going to make you, your children more sexually active. Um, I have seen studies that say that um, that children don't associate this vaccine with sexual activity, and there's no reason why that giving them this vaccine is going to make them think that it's safe for them to have sex. They just sort of associate it as a, just another vaccine that's pre preventing a disease like the rest of the vaccines that they're required to get. You did good. <laughs> yeah. That was an excellent Thank answer. You. <laughs> you need to do more role playing again now. <laughs> so anything else to add before we wrap this up? That was actually good. I'm good. Uh, so you the only other piece that I might add is, is also if it's your son mm -hmm. that you're talking about and there aren't any tests for it, mm -hmm. the ah, best point, way yeah. to prevent it yeah. is you know, is to get the vaccine, and that way you don't have to worry about it at all. Otherwise, you're not even going to find it until it's already in Too late. Much, much later stages yeah. of can you know of, right. of the uh, and also and cancer. also with men getting it, they can be carriers for the um, virus that can affect women's cervix and give them cancer. So mm -hmm. you want to protect yourself from possibly infecting someone else as well with. Something that can I think that's one of the things. I think it's got to be. Men need to be notified, young boys need to be notified or know about this even more. Mm -hmm. I, actually, with the vaccine, do we know what the, how many, which number is higher for, you know, for the vaccinations? Are you seeing more girls getting vaccinated or more boys? Probably still. Girls. Seeing more girls, you still know, more girls, still seeing more females getting vaccinated for it. Mm -hmm. So it, I mean, that still, is, yeah. And, and I didn't know boys be could because, and I think it's we definitely the word's got to get out there to get the boys because mm -hmm. I mean let's face it, I mean, boys are carols. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes to mm -hmm. sex, yes, they're carols. We know. I mean, um, it, it definitely has to get out there. The word has to get out there for them somehow. Right, and data that I've seen which comes from 2017 on the rates of the vaccination rates. It says that a little over 50% have received the full dosage of this vaccine. So there is still a large amount of the population that are able and should get this vaccine. So. This just hit me. I don't know if you guys would know this answer or not. Um, because we talked about school and colleges. Do we know if the military does this? Or not because you figure most kids are going in at 18 mm -hmm. and they're traveling around the world to me that'd be yeah. a prime candidate to get this vaccination if they haven't already I don't know too much about what is required for military like okay. so, right. but that would be something APG we're knocking on your door yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I never thought about that but that'd be you know if um well, I guess that would be federal government that would handle that. I know so. that they do. I know that they do um, in their clinics for their children. Right. That they do cover all vaccines, including HPV. Um, I'm not sure though about, like you were saying, it enlisted. Yeah. Um, I know that they give them a whole battery of so oh, many. Oh yes, I do know that. that it's not even funny, but the, I've asked. I actually have asked that question of a few um, guys that have gone into the service, and um, all they say is they don't really know what they've had. They've had so many vaccines, so I haven't gotten a good, clear answer on that. But I have asked them. I want to thank you guys again. Yes, even you, Rania. <laughs> January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. 
and the Harford County Health Department can help women with and without insurance get the cervical cancer screening and follow-up testing they may need. If you or someone you know needs help getting screened for cervical cancer, call them at 410-612-1780. Again, that's 410-612-1780. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil Counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Heel Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410 410- 6387021 experience the excellence and community impact for yourself tar hill construction group building excellence one roof at a time 